I hope you're ready for another day of scintillating discussion and presentations. My name is Stan Groff, and I'd like to spend the next few minutes discussing the wicked problem of alcohol impaired driving and my invention that I've chosen to call the DAISY device. In order to do that, um, the agenda that I've adopted is as follows. The unsolvable wicked problem, which is alcohol impaired driving, the capstone project and prototype, attempts at other solutions to date, the DAISY device innovation, business plan and budget, potential challenges and alternative strategies, implementation readiness, grand challenge social impact, and benchmarks for impact. First, let's take a look at the wicked problem. Let me introduce to you Candy Leitner, who is the mother of Carrie Leitner. Uh, Candy Leitner is the founder of Mothers Against Drunk Driving. And as you'll see in the following little video, uh, she had a good reason to do that. And let me see if I can get this going here. Where's the cursor? Curses on the cursor, where are you? so ham-fisted in my life. There we go. 13-year-old daughter Carrie was killed by a drunk driver. She was thrown 125 feet and she was left in the road to die. The man who killed her was out on bail from another hit and run drunk driving crash. And I took that pain, rage, and grief and started the largest anti-drunk driving organization in the world. While everyone celebrates holidays like Mother's Day and Memorial Day, I celebrate my child's life and mourn my child's death. My memories of her bring both smiles and tears. I think of her often, but never more so than around this time of the year. Smiles when I think of my daughter Carrie on the phone with her friends giving everyone advice swimming with her friends in our backyard pool and telling me how she was going to live with me forever because she had it made at home. Hundreds of thousands of people have lived as a result of her death. And who knew that her death would spark a movement? A revolution, really. Carrie has been gone for 37 years and not a day goes by that I don't think of her. saddest minute and 16 seconds that I've experienced in a very long time. So there's another picture of Carrie Leitner, a lovely young lady, cut down at age 13 in 1980. The grainy photo on the right is a picture, and it's the only one I have, of my boyhood best buddy, Jerry C. Um, Jerry uh, developed quite a binge drinking habit uh, in his life and one night he was rounding a curve uh, intoxicated uh, went too wide and was crushed by a truck and died instantly I have other relatives and friends who have also been involved in alcohol impaired driving crashes including my own father who was seriously hurt in one uh, he was not the driver he's the victim of a drunk driver so this work is very personal to me, uh, and that's why it's a pleasure to be before you this morning uh, to demonstrate what I hope is something that might save a life or two or 10 or 20. Half of you, according to the statistics, uh, are consumers of alcohol. Half the United States drinks alcohol, half of the adult population does. And half of those who do drink are binge drinkers. A stunning number to me that 66 million people in this country uh, uh, drink to excess every month or in the past 30 days. So the chances of having a drunk driving um, crashes is quite high. Nothing has worked to reduce the number of alcohol-related traffic deaths and injuries. 
increase over the past year. This uh, set of bars shows the number of deaths from 2008 to 2017, and hence the grand challenge is close the health gap, gap and the wicked problem is problem alcohol impaired driving. It's the equivalent of perpetual weekly Boeing 737 crashes. Year in, year out, a crash every week. Yet, we don't hear much about it in the popular media, that's for sure. It's too diffuse and um, it goes absolutely unnoticed. <coughs> so drunk driving has proven to be unsolvable and a new innovation is needed. Here are some things that have worked and some have worked better than others. In 2003, uh, the feds mandated a reduction from 0 0.10 ceiling to 0 0.08 nationwide, and that's a law change that did have a really good effect. Also, carried um, Candy Lightner's Mothers Against Drunk Driving or organization was the main motivator but behind the Friends Don't Let Friends Drive Drunk campaign which was a norm change and uh, occurred in the 80s. When at the beginning of the 80s, drunk driving deaths amounted to 31,000, not 11,000. So it came, came down a lot in, in the 80s. So in terms of self-measurement or measurement of blood alcohol content, or I may call it BAC from time to time, um, there are several ways of doing that measurement. Um, the first that we see here is professional grade breathalyzers used by law enforcement, both in the field and in, in the law enforcement centers. Um, then there is the commercial grade consumer breathalyzers that you can buy uh, off the internet or in some stores. On November 3rd, and again on November 16th, the New York Times and the National Public Radio ran a similar expose of all breathalyzers and found them to be inaccurate at best, which puts the whole breathalyzer group um, in question. And I'm sure you're gonna see things in the media about that as people uh, try to beat it uh, in court. <coughs> Ankle monitor blood alcohol concentration centers like SCRAM systems, that's the most famous, that's an example of that up there. The one up in the, in the upper left is a, an attempt at transdermal consumer grade BAC sensors uh, by, uh, by Backtrack Company or corporation called the Backtrack Skin. It has not hit the market. I've been on their waiting list for a year uh, to get one and it has not come out yet. Geiner Labs tried and failed uh, to, to uh, make a, a blood alcohol sensor and spun it off to Smart Start. I talked to Michael Moe and he <coughs> said they showed theirs. So there's no real competition out there uh, for, against any kind of transdermal, or meaning skin, alcohol uh, monitor. The last is the Driver Alcohol Detection System for Safety, or the DADS project. It is a public-private partnership between the federal government and the car makers, the insurance companies, even the alcohol industry is in on it, oddly. They've been trying to invent a car that won't start if you're drunk uh, mechanism <coughs> for since uh, 2008, and they, they have not yet succeeded. So it's, it's a market in this way, I guess. So, what we have here is a two-dimensional wireframe of the device that I've conceived of. It's called the DAISY, and that's an accurate acronym uh, from discrete. These are now design uh, characteristics. Discrete, accurate, inexpensive, simple, and you're okay, meaning safe. And if breathalyzers or anybody else are, are gonna compete against me, uh, they need to beat me in all of these areas uh, because, uh, well, you see in a minute, discrete, you certainly understand. Accuracy is, in, is understandable, but inexpensive is really key. 
I have my prototype here in three dimensions. And if you'll allow me, I'll just demonstrate the interface between the device and the consumer. And so a little light will light up uh, for you're good to go. Um, in the yellow range, you're about uh, 0.04 to 0.07. And in the red range, you're at 0.08 or, or, or higher, uh, and you should not drive. The idea is to inform the consumer, just like the breathalyzers, that, uh, of their status. Okay? Um, it comes out of a design thinking exercise over a year ago. It interrupts the behavior of those norms uh, that allow drinking and driving and uses, I think, new science. It is a, also a top of mind reminder uh, not to drink and drive, just having it on you, whatever and it will be a class one medical device according to the FDA. I've uh, retail priced it at 1995, which works in my business plan, and I have a patent pending on this, so it's locked up. <laughs> I would like to suggest to you that you don't focus on this big clunky thing. I made it out of two Walmart watches, a bunch of wire batteries, LEDs, and the rest of it. Um, it could be, something as simple as a mood ring, a little thing that glows green, yellow, or red. Or it could be something as flat as an AA medallion, one of these. Um, so with little lights that light up. Uh, so don't focus on that particular thing. The idea is to give simple instructions to consumers of alcohol, especially in bars and restaurants. Uh, so I needed a business plan, that's the other part of my uh, uh, project, and it's, it's going to be a moonshot for sure, and I've called it the Daisy Corporation or the Daisy Detection Corporation. Quickly, the, there's a proposed operating structure. Uh, I've, cr I've actually created a business so far. It's a Florida social purpose, D Corporation, D meaning benefit, so I got a place to put federal grants or private investments or my own money. We'll be under the auspices of a board of directors. We'll have a small staff. We'll contract for manufacturing and shipping. I'll start the Pushing Daisies information campaign to get it out there. Um, and I, it should impact the grand challenge by interrupting those behaviors of alcohol and fair driving. A bit about the budget. In the first year, uh, in the, the research and development needs to be continued to perfect uh, the sensor. That's the only thing missing from that thing that's going around is the actual sensor itself. But that's been the bugaboo of, of everybody. And my ace in the hole is the Viterbi School of Engineering at the, on the USC campus, where I've been and um, where I am going to go again in just a month or two. Whatever. In the second year, after the startup grant, and it becomes pro profitable. We expect salary, uh, sorry, sales of 600,000 and, and better, representing a 34% profit. So this is a for profit corporation. And in the third year, a million four and change, and at about, it'll settle down at about a 40% profit. So there's your sustainability. It's, it's uh, profitable uh, going in, into the future. And we're gonna have to do something with those Profits, it can't all go back to the board and the owner uh, because it's a B Corp and we'll be investing in some charities and whatnot. Moving on, there are challenges and alternative strategies. It, the device may not work like all the other breathalyzer and uh, transdermal devices. So there, this Akamatsu is a researcher in Japan and he and his colleagues in 2015 came up with a smear test. Uh, you smear on a little substance and you put a black light on it and it uh, glows colors. So that's an interesting alternative that I haven't done much in my mind with, but it's an alternative. The cost of production and shipping, shipping may exceed our expectations and we'll just have to ramp up the competition, do some rebidding and the rest of it. The innovation may suffer from low sales, in that case, we'll have to redesign the whole thing and improve our campaign to boot. 
and competition might finally catch up to us, although I intend to disrupt the marketplace with this device. Uh, and so if competition does uh, catch up, uh, we'll assess, adjust, and overcome, which is a military uh, approach to how things uh, can, can be uh, right-sided. The time frame for readiness is four categories. The day zero part is what I've already done. I've registered this corporation with Florida SunBiz, which is like their Secretary of State. I received a federal employee ID number and an IRS registration, applied for a patent on the DAISY device, established a business bank account with my own funds, and that's that stuff, and begun the search for, for funders. Ask me about my great meeting on Tuesday, the advocacy thing. And then in the second, third, and fourth categories, there's a series of things that can and should be done to make it go by, by 90 days. Grand Challenge Social Impact. We've changed the behavior around drunk, uh, around drunk driving, impaired, reduced economic costs of alcohol impaired driving crashes, less than one factor of alcohol use as a social determinant of health, and close the health and wellness gap between the poor and the rest of society since alcohol impairment affects the poor um, more than it does the rest of society. Product impact benchmarks. Uh, we can count our sales. It will start out slow in Manatee and Pinellas, Pinellas County, where I live. That's the short term results. And we'll be looking at numbers of crashes, numbers of alcohol impaired driving deaths and injuries, the rate of deaths per 100 million vehicle miles, number of drunk driving arrests, and number of self reported incidents of alcohol impaired driving. The, um, the Center for Disease Control does a survey every year like SAMHSA does, and um, their survey of a lot of people uh, results in about a million uh, self-reports of drunk driving, tip of the iceberg. It's much bigger than that. Mm -hmm. But we can draw that data, and eventually, in the medium term, we'll be looking at the whole state of Florida, and long-term scale all across the country, and then uh, all across the world. I expect that there'll be an S-curve like that if this thing catches on. So, there's the website, daisydetector.com, the email that goes with it, my own phone number, write it down, call me up. And like my friend Daisy Duck says, wouldn't you rather wear a daisy than be pushing up daisies? Oh. Thank you for your kind attention. Are there questions?